Um, a tremendous amount has changed in America since the last election cycle, primarily with the number of people who actually have a social media profile. The fastest growing group on Facebook are married women over the age of 47, uh, things like Snapchat, which actually uh, came about in 2011, but now has over 4 billion video views a day, which is the same as Facebook. So new social media outlets become important every single election cycle. It's perfectly possible that in 2016 or in 2020, we won't even be talking about Snapchat, we won't be talking about Facebook, we'll have something else entirely. So candidates use whatever social media is popular to communicate with voters, especially young voters. Uh, there's a lot you can get across in the Snapchat. Now, initially, people really doubted, especially older voters and older political analysts, doubted Snapchat was useful for anything. They thought, well, it's just a way to send pictures to each other that disappear. Why would you want to do that? But what the Sanders campaign has realized is that they can create what is called a geofence. And they tell Snapchat, please take any of the Snapchat videos and pictures from this area, from this event, put it together in a small video that can be shared over 24 hours. It gives immediacy and intimacy to every single Bernie Sanders campaign event. And it's one of the ways that he's been able to get people excited because they feel if they've missed something, they have to get to it now. So Snapchat has immediacy, it has the quickness of Vine, it has the connectivity of Facebook, but it has the sort of visual engagement that you can sometimes get from Instagram. They're going to play a bigger role. Uh, this is a year where young voters, meaning anybody from maybe 30 and under to 25 and under, could make up as much as 20% of the voting population in this upcoming election. That's going to be very significant for both Republican and Democratic candidates, depending on who ends up getting the nomination. Young voters don't tend to vote much. Uh, and so every single campaign has to use social media, political engagement, television shows, and rallies to get young voters to vote. Whoever wins young voters has a greater chance of winning the presidential election because young people don't just turn out to be great voters, they're also important volunteers. And if you get the volunteers, you can usually win the state. This is something that I write about in my book, One Day to Sell. Many people confuse these three things, but they're very important. Your slogan for your campaign is how you want people to both feel and understand your message. Your message of the campaign is why you want people to vote for you and not vote for the other person. And your theme is how you want people to feel when they see you in your campaign. So for example, Senator Obama, when he was running for president in 2008, his message was simple. Vote for me and I will change things in Washington, D.C. Don't vote for John McCain, that'll be a third George Bush term. The way he wanted you to feel about the campaign was hopeful. That's why he talked about hope and change all the time. But his, mess, his slogan was actually, yes, we can. And yes, we can encapsulated that not only was he going to be the change he talked about, but that your hopes would come true. Most campaigns aren't good at making these three things distinct. If we look at Donald Trump's successful campaign right now, and again, we're only in the primary season, he's not yet the nominee, his slogan is, make America great again. How does Donald Trump want you to feel? He wants you to feel angry, but hopeful. He wants you to feel frustrated with how America is because it's not great anymore, but that he can change it. And his message is the people in Washington, D.C. don't know how to fix things, and I do. It remains to be seen if he'll be as successful as Obama was in 2008, but he does have a slogan, he does have a message, and he does have a theme.